a gigantic lump of radioactive mass that kills everyone within minutes. This is the so-called elephant's foot in the ruins of Chernobyl. Stay tuned to join me on a journey into the deadly ruins of the nuclear power plant and see original footage of this unholy creation. If it makes you beam, I'll be galactically pleased with a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you guys and welcome. We've talked about the Chernobyl nuclear power plant here on the channel before. A brief summary of the events. On April 26, 1986, a serious nuclear accident occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in what is now Ukraine. During a test at reactor number 4, which we will talk about in more detail in a moment, a malfunction occurred which led to a sudden release of radioactive materials. An explosion in the reactor destroyed the roof and the upper part of the building, releasing large amounts of radioactivity into the environment. This was the most devastating nuclear accident in human history and had really bad effects on the people and also on the flora and fauna in the surrounding area. In order to cope with the accident in Chernobyl, a sarcophagus was built around the damaged reactor to prevent a further release of radioactivity. However, this old sarcophagus was rather makeshift and was then replaced in 2016 by a new protective shell called the New Safe Confinement, which shields the radioactivity much better and is also equipped with all kinds of instruments and cameras. Incidentally, the necessity of this new casing is controversial and some radiation protection experts believe that the radioactivity level is now low enough to continue using the old casing. Others say that a new shell is appropriate simply because of the risk that the old shell could collapse due to a natural disaster, an earthquake or similar. Whoever is right is irrelevant, because the radioactive drop has been sucked and the new shell has been in place for several years. What is undisputed among all experts, however, is that there are still isolated places in the power plant where the radioactivity is still extremely high. So here is an important tip, if you ever accidentally stray into the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which could happen if you mumble in the travel agency again. Do not go into room 217-2 under any circumstances. This room is about 15 meters southeast of the damaged reactor and 6 meters above the floor. And in this room is the elephant's foot. Unfortunately not one of those, but one made of highly radioactive material, a molten mixture that today, decades after the accident, could still kill you with its radiation. Here you can see a picture taken by Arthur Korniev, a high-ranking employee in the planning of the new protective shell. We don't see a ghost here, but Artur Korniev in an early form of a selfie, taken with a self-timer. The elephant's foot is impressively visible. Basically a large, radioactive blob. A dead monster, born from the reactor accident. But what exactly is the elephant's foot made of? When the core meltdown occurred in reactor 4, resulting in a radioactive fire throughout the building, immensely high temperatures were generated. These extreme conditions caused the building's construction materials, mainly concrete, steel and glass, to melt with molten nuclear fuel. It is therefore no exaggeration to say that the elephant's foot is a spawn of nuclear meltdown. The molten material that results from a nuclear meltdown is called corium, a portmanteau word made up of the English core and the ending eum, which is typical for chemical elements. In other words, the core element. Corium is therefore the molten fuel that is composed of uranium, zirconium, graphite and other substances and is produced when the fuel element of a nuclear reactor melts and mixes with other materials in the reactor vessel. And I can promise you, you don't want to mix this stuff in your coffee, because once it's formed it's incredibly hot, radioactive, and can even eat through the walls, as we can see impressively in the elephant's foot. Remember, room 217-2 is 15 meters away from the reactor. This is where the corium was able to penetrate and create this spawn of hell. Instead of the foot of a nice pachyderm, the thing reminds me a bit more of an abscess, with its now black coloration and wrinkled structure. It's also fitting that the elephant's foot is just one part of a much larger mass that stretches under the room to below reactor 4. Creepy. And I don't know about you, but I feel a morbid urge to touch the thing and find out more about its consistency. A bit like plutonium. Take a look at this. Looks kind of tasty. Could taste like orange and we'd never know. We do know quite a bit about the consistency of the elephant's foot, though. Maxim Sevaliev from the Institute for Safety Problems of Nuclear Power Plants says, in the beginning, the elephant's foot was so hard that the scientists had to use a Kalashnikov rifle to break off a piece for analysis. 
Now it is more or less the consistency of sand. The forbidden sand that we must never use to build a sand castle. Now the question is, how dangerous is the elephant's foot today? We have already seen people in protective suits entering the room and taking photos. Here is a video taken in 2007 that feels like a clip from a found footage horror movie. We also see that the whole room is full of radioactive debris. At the time of the discovery, shortly after the nuclear disaster, the radioactivity near the elephant's foot was around 8,000 to 10,000 rentgens. An intensity that causes such severe radiation sickness within a few minutes that it inevitably leads to death. Since then, radiation has decreased massively due to the decay of radioactive elements. But before you start packing your bags right now, this is not a free pass for room 2172. According to an estimate from 2019, the radiation intensity in the immediate vicinity of the elephant's foot is still around 40 sieverts per hour. I've also seen other sources, such as this Reddit post, where an x-ray per hour, i.e. over 100 sieverts, is assumed. Either way, I wouldn't risk it, because that's still a very high dose of radiation that causes radiation sickness and can also be fatal if you're exposed to it unprotected for long periods of time in the room. Nobody knows for sure whether and how many people have caught radiation sickness from the elephant's foot and perhaps even died. There is still this mysterious picture here, taken before the well-known photo of Arthur Korniev, by an unknown photographer. Some believe it to be a fake, as the photographer is unknown and nothing is known about the photo. At that time, the radiation exposure must have been very, very high, so one can only hope that if the photo is genuine, the photographer was aware of this and wore appropriate protective clothing and only spent a short time in the room. Of course, there are many more of these radioactive deposits in the ruins of the nuclear power plant, such as naturally radiating stalagmites and stalactites that have melted through the walls of the building everywhere. It is also worth remembering the workers who helped to make Chernobyl safe for the first time after the reactor accident and who installed the first sarcophagus. Many of these people worked under the most adverse conditions and without adequate protective clothing. It is now known that some of the workers died from radiation sickness, and the elephant's foot is still a clear memorial to this sad historical fact. However, the elephant's foot is not the only nuclear artifact that is life-threatening. The so-called Demon Core, which was being researched in the USA for the use of a third atomic bomb, killed two scientists. And the exact sequence of events of these accidents is truly incredible. When I was researching the story, my mouth really dropped open in amazement. Because so much bad luck and lack of safety precautions are really unimaginable. So if you want to beam even more, be sure to click on the video below to find out all about the Demon Core, including original footage. And if you want to support my work, you can also browse through the Space Store. There you'll find the shirts from the videos, real meteorites, plus planets, and much more. Every purchase really helps me a lot to keep the channel going. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.